Welcome to Healthy Planet, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet on the Think Tech live streaming network series. I'm your host, Dr. Grace O'Neill. Joining me today is Hansen of Level V808. Today we're going to talk about Hansen's vegan journey and how he started Level V808. So Hansen, tell us how you became vegan. So um, let's see, 2017, I think was the first, um, my vegan anniversary really. Um, it started my other half. Uh, my girlfriend at the time was pescatarian. And um, I was trying to do some research to convince her to start eating meat with me again. <laughs> so that's literally how it started. So I, after, you know, going over, you know, through research, I'm a science-based guy. So I was going through the research and I told her, uh, I think I just told myself I need to stop eating meat. So <laughs> that's, that's literally how, how the journey began. So I, I, you know, I started doing a lot of research, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of the documentary, I read the China study, I did a, a, a whole bunch of self-reading, I guess you could say. And then, um, yeah, I just kind of made the decision. I was like, you know, I'm going to try it. And um, that's what got me to, you know, start being vegan. And then I think um, what kept me vegan, because I think there's two different things. I think what kept me vegan, I went to a, um, um, uh, a animal save, a, a save, a save movement. And um, I got to experience, um, you know, the, um, the emotions that go into the animal industry and and then I, honestly, after that, I was pretty much ch changed. Uh, I was in, I, I kind of made up my mind never to go eating meat again, to be honest. So, um, yeah, I came for the health and I stayed for the animals. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, how about, how did your family and your friends react? Like, I'm sure your girlfriend, she was probably on board with becoming vegan or your Yeah, so, I mean, a couple of days after I decided to go vegan, she became vegan. And um, then um, uh, it's tough because I think growing up in Hawaii or growing up with any, you know, family has cultures and the culture kind of revolves around food. So it's a kind of a culture shock, you know, and my dad is an immigrant from Vietnam. So he doesn't understand the concept of uh, veganism, I guess, when, it, when, it, when there's an abundance of food and, and plethora of things here and here in the <laughs> United States. Um, he kind of th saw it as more of a, a, like a Buddhist monk journey. So, cause there's a <laughs> lot of Buddhist monks in it, but I told him, no, nothing like that. I just, you know, want to eat healthier and I had a son, so I have, I have a son and I want to be around for as long as possible. So I told him, uh, I told my, my dad, who's kind of the harder of the, my both parents to kind of convince, I told him, you know, this is for my health journey and um, I want to be along, around, around a long time for my son, really. And then my mom is a caring mom. She's just, yeah, you, you do you and I'll support you. And um, that helps. And my, 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 I mean, growing up in a, you know, Asian, Asian culture, I guess you could say, we didn't eat much meat anyway, so it was kind of easier, but I guess when it comes to um, family gatherings, it is a little difficult. But um, the good thing is that uh, a year or two after becoming vegan, I took my son to um, MedFest, and I let him kind of roam around when I was waiting in line, and he came yeah. back. He said, I watched a video. I think I'm going to try it, and he's been vegan since for the last four yeah. years now. So, so how old is he? He is now a junior in high school, so he oh, started wow. when he was a seventh grader, seventh grader in high school. Nice. Yeah, so, so how are his friends reacting to you know, it? You better than anyone? I thought. You know, I, I think um, <laughs> they, they come in an age where bullying is a bad thing, you know, so yeah. um, they're more interested and they're every time he, he brought his lunch out, he would, um, they would all kind of like see what he's going to eat, you know, and <laughs> that was kind of my motivation to kind of start cooking better, I guess you could say. I always enjoyed cooking, but uh, I, I think I put a little more focus into um, local style foods. So my son would never miss out on anything that his other friends would enjoy. So that's kind of how I started all my different recipes and things like that. Just, just to make sure that my son wouldn't feel left out really. Yeah. So tell us about how you began your business then. How did yes. that start? So um, my business is a result of the pandemic, you know, so it, I had to pivot. Um, I'm in the event industry. So I have two companies. Um, one in the marketing of nightlife and concerts, and my other company is a production company. We do sound, stage, lighting, special effects. Um, we do weddings and you know school proms and things like that. So once pandemic happened, it all you know stopped really. So I had to find out another way to source income for my son's tuition. He's over at Marino right now. So you know, mm. you know, business stops, but tuition doesn't. So. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I wanted to find out um, another way to uh, have an income. And it started off as a fundraiser. I wanted to, you know, make tuition. So I, I made a, 
um, I happened to make a vegan beef stew that pretty much tastes like regular beef stew. And um, I kind of put it out there just for my family and friends more so than the vegan community. And nice. I posted it up online. And then um, my friends posted it up online. And then all the other, the people outside of my circle, all the vegans started to hit me up and it became a thing. So I was making, started off with, you know, 10 plates and 15 plates and 20 mm -hmm. plates and 30 plates. Uh -huh. And it just started growing from there. And then um, I realized it's sustainable. The business model is sustainable because I think um, there's a, a niche in uh, local style vegan food, I guess you could say. Not yeah, many people yeah. were doing it at the time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think, I don't know anybody else who's doing it really. I mean, yeah. besides you, are there other people? Yeah, on, there's, a, there's a small handful. I know um, that Asperger's makes plates. I know um, yeah. Yeah, Umeke Market does one or two plates, but I, I was trying yeah. to like, I was just trying to recreate all the recipes I was making for my son to take home, you know, to take home lunch to for to school. I mean, will you offer like the drink? And um, I don't know if you have any pictures, um, Eric, but uh, yeah, the last beef stew picture. The, yeah, and then there's like a rice on the side. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah. I mean, entree, and you know, so yeah. like, I wanted it to be like a regular plate, plate lunch. Yeah. So it comes with two scoops of rice, your potato mm -hmm. mac salad, which is hundred percent vegan, <laughs> and I also include a drink. Um, for the package deal is um, it, it comes with your 100% uh, vitamin vitamin B12 because yeah it's so hard to remember to take B12 you know pills and I tell um and my son too is he's an active teenager so he never remembers so I kind of wanted to incorporate it in the meal so you get your daily dose every time you eat with level B. Yeah, I mean, so what do you what kind of what do you use for the meat? I mean, like when there's beef stew, what are you using for the beef? Are you yeah, the so, or what? yeah, so a lot of it's it's mock meats. Um, the beef stew is um, a garden mock meat. So I pre-treat everything. It's all marinated and smoked. And then as well as the, um, as well as the, I use um, a Beyond patty. Um, the famous one is the katsu and it's just actually portobello mushrooms. So that looks really good. I it, wish you it's could the best seller. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it, it is the best seller. I mean, that, I mean that looks delicious. <laughs> it, it go, it I think goes my husband had that. He's like, "This is delicious." <laughs> no, yeah, it's it's crazy. I, I, you know, I'm one of my favorite things was chicken katsu. So that was the recipe I was trying to hone and perfect. And um, yeah. it's way yeah. easier now. There's so much like um, replacement meats and you know uh, mock meats that it, it's um, it's really easy easier nowadays to kind of make certain dishes, but I found out that the portobello mushroom just locks in that juiciness. So it, mm. it when you when you fry it, it just comes out perfect. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I, you know, I always have trouble. I don't know. Do you deep fry it or how do you get the the um, little panko to stick on it? Yeah, so I use an egg replacer. So I use a, um, oh. a specially modified egg replacer. So I use it just like yeah. an egg batter. Except you just gotta work with the consistency to make it yeah, yeah. right the right batter. That is the hardest thing is the the getting Get the panko to stick without yes. making it turn into cake. Uh, yeah. I, I had so many trial and errors about I, uh -huh, I was eating like uh -huh. mushroom cakes. It was for a little while. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you I bake it, it or what I mean, how do you like get it? You know, do you like how do you get it yeah. to look like that? It's just Yeah, so this it's just regular. Um I grew up eating, you know, katsu and tempura. So it's, it's in a wok, like it's oil, oil fried wok, you know? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. You put it in yeah. a little, my mother yep. used to do So that, it's a yeah. huge, yeah. I, I, I try to keep things as original as possible. So it comes out as, you know, as similar as possible to um, the original recipe. And then, you know, there are a few things that you have to kind of tweak just because it is a mock meat or is an actual, you know, actual meat. So, yeah. So did you find that after you became vegan, did you feel any changes in your body yourself? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, you, when you first go vegan, you kind of get that initial rush, you know, you, you feel more energetic, you sleep better at night. Um, and I guess, honestly, I think it's a peace of mind too. You, you know, you have a, you have a better understanding of passion for other people. So your, your mind is a little more free. And I think that makes, that takes a, a, a big relief off your shoulders and you sleep mm -hmm. better to be honest so yeah um, yeah absolutely. definitely yeah have you been able to um get any of your friends to uh follow your path or your family yeah Especially. i mean i i mean i would say the majority of my businesses are non-vegans they 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 i mean to me i that's why i pat myself on the back if i can get that's a awesome. vegan, that's to great, eat vegan yeah. food and not think it's vegan food and the stigmatism of vegan food I mm -hmm. think I already won the battle, you know, so yeah. I, I think it's um my one extra step in, uh, in my uh, my my vegan campaign for 
to push the agenda. But um, yeah, yeah I mean, there, there are a few people that, that definitely eat less meat. Um, I think people have, are on the way. Um, but getting my son to go vegan honestly made the world to me. That's, that's, that's the awesome, biggest. You know? yeah, yeah. And, I mean, it's yeah. going to be great for his health. And, you know, it's just, it's just, 100%. You know, just knowing that your family member is able to do that. That's great. You know? No, definitely. Definitely. I, I think um, when I was right before I was vegan, I was starting to get the pre symptoms of gout. And I, gout runs in my family, you know? So, Oh, yeah. um, it's debilitating to my dad sometimes. So oh, it's uh, terrible. Yeah, my it, dad. It, has that it's too. bad. So yeah. I once I you know started eating all plant based, hundred percent vegan. You know the the that whole worry is gone. I can eat a little more freely. I can have you know uh, a peace mm-hmm. of mind without getting a flare up. You know things like that. So that definitely changed. Definitely, and uh, honestly, the biggest thing too is um I remember when I took my son into the doctor for the first time for his physical. And then um, he, 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 he jotted down the notes that my son became vegan. And then by his second follow-up, he, you know, he, he was really astounded that he, like uh, his weight index went up, his height index went up. Like, yeah, he's like, oh, this is weird. I thought you, you, you'd lose, you know, so much weight because you're not eating meat. And I was telling him like, you know, it's, it's completely different than you yeah, think. Yeah, I know. He doesn't know. I mean, that's great that you're teaching him. Because a lot of, even though I'm a doctor myself, a lot of doctors, even my, my own colleagues, they don't know. They think that, you know, the same thing, that people are going to be malnourished. And actually, the, yep. the thing is, when you become vegan, you're better nourished. Yep. Yep. No, <laughs> you know, exactly. you're not taking up your diet with something that does, doesn't have any besides protein. And we get too much of it anyway. No, so, exactly. You know, exactly. That's, that's great. You yeah. Know, we we, have to we see watch it this. We watch the health chart. I'm oh, sorry. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Oh, no. They just have to see it for themselves, yep. you know? They won't yeah. believe it until they see it, you know. Yeah. yeah. But that's that's great. I mean, that's just phenomenal that you're teaching your doctor things. <laughs> yeah, my son is doing it. I mean, his full chart is doing it. His, yeah, uh, that's his, awesome. His height and index, yeah, because he was really worried about you know height growth and bone index and all that stuff. And uh, as soon as he, you could see us, us, you know, a definite raise in everything. Oh, that's wonderful. It is. It is. Yeah. So tell us about the, um, you know, I know right now you just do Fridays Mm -hmm. um, for lunch, but is there a potential that you're going to expand to other weekdays? You you know, definitely. Um, But the man is out there. So um, I'm kind of like burning the candle on both ends out because now business (laughs) business is booming. Like uh, every, all the event business, it's all back, you know, double because everyone's trying to make up from last year. But man, it's like, um, I started to do catering gigs and getting um, uh, also, um, uh, offers to do different pop-ups and things like that so uh, I mean the the angle was either always going to be either a permanent spot or a food truck or something to that effect but uh, the market is so crazy right now so I'm thinking I'm going to stick to just you know pop-ups on different days and um yeah have offers to come into um, other restaurant spaces during their off time oh you so, totally should do that I think um there's that one that's um a bar you know what I'm talking about they're very vegan friendly it's in um kind of like Macaulay oh, yeah um also yummy Oh, so yummy. Yeah. yeah, no, definitely. I, know, I am. Um, yeah, I know a couple of people do um, the pop ups there. Yeah, the pop ups there. So no, definitely. Yeah, awesome. I'm good friends with the guys at Also Yummy. I try to support every vegan thing possible. As soon as it pops up, I'm there sampling it. Yes, it. yes, me too. Like if yeah. something's at Costco, because the yeah. problem with Costco is they'll have something vegan yeah, yeah. and then they'll take it away because not enough people buy it or something. Exactly. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like when they had kale chips. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I'm wondering, how about catering at the events? Do you think you could run the event and then also I do don't the know if anyone's proposed that to you, but I think yeah, that there was a, a couple really. offers. There was a couple yeah. offers. You know, the um, shucks, it's just that the production level, like it's it's just me and my mom, really. You know, mm-hmm. I, I do most of the cooking if it's the katsu because there's so many orders. My mom yeah. helps out, uh, but other than that, um, it's so it's just really tough uh, for at that at this point right now, but. You know, I had to turn away. Um, I was supposed to cater HPU's uh, welcome ceremony. That's like thousands of students. And oh my gosh! Guess, because HPU has a lot of international students, and there a lot of them are are vegan, That would have you know? been awesome. I know. So I had an event somewhere else that day, and I was oh, just trying to organize no. it. And I I told them, unfortunately, there's no way I can do the amount of orders you want oh on the gosh. day. But you know, there's things like that where I'm just trying to get to the point where I can accept those kind of things. You know. Yeah. And vegan weddings. There's a bunch of vegan weddings coming mm-hmm. that that, that Maybe you could hire somebody. Like I no, mean, yeah. events like that. Like you know, just per diem for now. Right. And then they could help you out, or you could like 
um, you know, go with another pop up into something like that, and then people right, have right, right. options. You know, I mean, I don't know. I'm just thinking about it. it's such a shame for you yeah, know, I know and expose I know. all those people to exactly. um, something exactly. that could be you know really good for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think a few students tried it and they went to their counselor and said, hey, this is the this is the things we want, you know, and they kind of wanted a local feel. They want they're here visiting from all these other places. They wanted something local. So, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah that, that, that's definitely in the works. I'm trying to work with different and also Yummy is one of the kitchens I actually offer, too. So they're super supportive of the vegan community. So I'm just mm -hmm. trying to find out a way where I can get to that level where the production can be that about at that level. Yeah. So um, tell me about the name, Level V808. Why yes. Level V808? <laughs> well, the, the V is for vegan. Um, yes. my, 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 my marketing company is, was Level H. Um, and then when I, be, when I became vegan, I wanted to do a vegan business. It just made sense to be Level V for the vegan. And the level is just always progressing. That, that's, that's, that's the um, foresight that I want to have is just make sure I'm, I'm always moving forward and looking you know, to the next level instead of being stagnant where I am. I mean, I tried to Google it and there was something online about level V or level five being like the greatest thing to attain as a vegan, I guess, being like the perfect vegan. <laughs> I was like, is that what it's about? Or why level V808? That's great. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know there was anything out there. No, yeah, yeah just, I mean, there was something was... out there like that. I found it on a website, but I didn't oh, wow. know what was Oh, wow. Maybe, maybe that too then. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. It was just a, it's a play off of my production company, my uh, prevent events company mm -hmm. yeah cool. i mean it would be great if you could you know just kind of marry both of them and no definitely like that. So, i definitely. mean you could offer like not doing it and doing it together so mm -hmm. do you have people who work for your uh, events company no yep yeah, no definitely um, yeah. yeah definitely we're uh, yeah, so maybe you could hire i mean i don't know if it's a, it might be a different business but it'd be great if you could hire i'm sure there's people interested i mean i know the restaurant business isn't mm -hmm. easy Right. Yeah, the you know, restaurant business is tough. Hours, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how. I mean, I'm such as at a, a beginner level uh, with production wise. I don't know how some of these bigger restaurants do it. It's it's time consuming. So I applaud all the restauranteurs out there, man. They're 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 working hard behind oh, the scenes. Yeah, just to make yeah, just to make ends meet. You know. No, well, exactly, exactly. So yeah, you I'm, run out of. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. So I think um, how I'm gonna make the two merge is that I'm in the works of planning a vegan night market. So oh, I'm, no. I'm, I'm in the, I'm in the nightlife business. I'm in the production company business That's and I'm great. a vegan. So I'm trying to, I, I kind of visited a bunch out there. I visited LA. I went to um, Portland a few times. I've been to Oh, Vegas. you should completely do that. Yeah. They have one in East Hollywood. It's yep. awesome. Yeah. I've know? been to the one in East Hollywood. I made friends with them and I kind of figured out their business model and I got to sit down with them for a little while. So I, I kind of want to bring that to Hawaii because we have such a huge eclectic market of vegans in Hawaii and Everyone's kind of, you know, a little segmented here and there. I kind of want to just bring them out for a nightlife because there is nothing like that, really. Yeah, no, that'd be great. Have music, have mm -hmm. different pop-ups, have exactly. do vegan desserts. And then exactly. Yeah, I have a few. Even, you know, no, no, exactly. That's exactly what I mean. When I went out there, it's like, it's so fun to go to these because on the other places, yeah. you get to sit down, have a drink, eat your meal amongst other people and just listen to music. And yeah, it's a great, oh, it's a great event. So no, I kind of want to bring absolutely that to do that. Oh, I'll definitely. be. You'll have to tell me the first day. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, I got some, yeah, uh, some vendors day. that normally aren't in town to possibly come in town for for some of these. This yeah, I mean, even maybe people from the Big Island or Maui would be willing to do. Oh, that. definitely. I mean, I, I went to the one in be... East LA as a yeah. trip, as as oh, a yeah. as a trip. So I think. Oh, I it's amazing. Make it like that. Yeah, yeah no, it's amazing. You know, I mean, because I don't know. Like right now, the woman who plans Veg Fest, she's over in Maui, so we mm -hmm. haven't had anything like that for a while. Right, right. I don't right. know if you want to take on that, but that's kind of in your purview. <laughs> yeah, yeah, We'd love yeah. to have another Oahu Veg Fest and then bring people in, you know, from elsewhere, I guess. Like right, right. But I mean, even just to have all the vegan vendors together in one place would be amazing. So, no, definitely. Yeah, so definitely. That, that would be great. Um, what else was I going to say? I think, um, I guess with this business and everything, um, it looks like you're also using compostable items i saw you had some can you show the pictures yeah, yeah so i think that's great i mean i don't know if it, it probably costs more but it's very it does. good for it does yeah. i mean my price point I'm, I'm not gonna lie i appreciate every single person that bought a plate because um it's it's priced high because from when i started i already had a vision of what i want to do so mm -hmm. I, I i did 100 percent compostable before it was mandated by the state so my price hasn't changed 
I wanted to include that drink. So I wanted to make sure it's B12 friendly and the, yeah, everything is plant-based. Uh, it's compostable plant-based, hundred percent, you know, put in the earth compostable, not going to a factory. So yeah. I sourced them. Um, I mean, now that there's easier options because of the new mandate to go compostable is great. Um, I sourced a, that Moxie bag out of Brazil. It's hundred ah. percent. Yeah. It's, it's, it costs money to bring in, but I feel it's worth it, you know? Um, yeah, no, it's absolutely and, worth it. And I I priced all of that into when I first started. So the good thing is that I don't have to change my prices if everything is as is. And mm -hmm. I think um when I was watching uh other other vendors and also other restauranteurs, they're saying that most people just want it all inclusive. Just give me everything, yes. you know, instead of yes, yes. little things, you know, instead of like them. you know adding little things. Yeah, and they said I'll pay the price if it's cost. worth it. I'll pay their price. I'd rather just pay it all at once. Yes, so, yes, you know, absolutely. I, I like that. I appreciate that. And I, I, for me, when I go to other places, I like to save the sauces because it's hard to get vegan like fish sauce or vegan mm -hmm. like yes, sauces. Yes. So I kind of do the same. You know, I, I give like twelve ounces of gravy, like a soda can worth of gravy, because mm -hmm. you can use it for whatever dish you want later on. It'll save you time for the next meal. I just want to make it easy for people to stay vegan and become vegan as, as best as possible. Yes. Yeah, and you know those compostable um, containers you use, they really are compostable because sometimes I'll put them in my garden, like mm -hmm. I'll put the little container, I'll plant stuff in it or, and then, or I'll put it in my worm bucket and it mm -hmm. really does compost a lot easier than those, um, sometimes people have cups and they have a little liner inside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that liner is not compostable. No, yeah, exactly. Those other products are now, the only thing I guess is the vitamin water has that plastic, plastic bottle. Yeah. Yes. That's I'm trying really to good. find something other than vital water that has a hundred percent B12 in it, but that's, that's yeah, it. No, me. it's, it's definitely a challenge. You know? It is. It I is. mean, I guess if you had something with nutritional yeast, that's but it true, doesn't have a hundred percent though, you know, but it would be like some kind of B12. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, though, no, that is a challenge because the plastic too is a problem. Um, but I appreciate your efforts to find something compostable like that because there's a lot of places that are vegan, but their their packaging is not as friendly. But I will say right. the places that are vegan, their package is generally friendlier than places that are not because people are more aware of this problem that we have you know that is true of the environment and everything so tell us about how you got your kitchen certified do you go somewhere else to cook or is it like did you have to certify your kitchen there or yeah so i i um, have a support kitchen in chinatown um mm -hmm. a family friend lets me rent their kitchen and i make everything there before they open for business and then i i have a catering license so i bring it back to my house and i put oh, everything nice, together nice, here nice. and i serve it here yeah when i first went down to the um the, the food board or food department or health department I was like I need a license to do like like fundraiser pop food. That, yeah, pop yeah. Ups. it was just it was a fundraiser I was like you know how people like sell loot like lao lao out of their house I just want to do the same to make money to yeah, pay for my son's no, tuition strict, yeah yeah and then she's like oh you need to get a catering license so then I mean I'm so new to this I mean I work in front of the house never behind the house so they're like oh you need a support kitchen I was like what's a support kitchen I have to like start from scratch but you know it's worth it I think um it makes you uh, a, a more business savvy. And I guess also you kind of, because you put so much effort into you, the, the, the product is that much more special to me than when I put it out there for everybody. Oh yeah. No, that's awesome. Um, what else was I going to say? So your location is a very unique location. I mean, it's very convenient, except sometimes it's hard to get out of the location <laughs> than it, it is to get out, but yeah. it's a beautiful little house in the middle of like a ton of buildings. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Tell My, us about the location and how you acquired that location. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, uh, it's, uh, the house was built over a hundred years ago. It's like a oh, small little beautiful. quaint house. Um, yeah, I mean, I grew up in this house, really. It, it's, um, oh. they, they tried to, my, my, my father's stubborn. They tried to buy out the land to build all the high rises around us. And he just held out. He, they weren't that's giving That's awesome. Him I love and that. That's why we're like surrounded by these. Things, <laughs> know, one little right? old school. But that's awesome. It's so cool that you still have that one house because, you know, I used to pass by all the time before I knew about you. And I was like, mm -hmm. that's a really cool little house by all these terrible buildings, you know? Yeah, and then yeah. now, I mean, then I went, I was like, oh, I guess like these people must, I didn't know if you rented it or owned it or whatever. Right, right, right. But that's so cool. You know, I mean, yeah. it's, it's such a cool little house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, I moved here um, so I could ride my, I went to Punahou, so I ride my bike to school every day. So 
we moved to oh, town so I could just my, my parents worked two jobs growing up so I had mm -hmm. to kind of we got me closer so I could ride my bike to school but no I, I love it here. Awesome. it's like a they call it a ginger my parents called it a gingerbread house it looks like a gingerbread <laughs> house, but it's so convenient for everything, honestly. It is. It's right in the middle of town. And um, my yeah. mom becomes the uh, traffic controller trying to get everyone in and out of the driveway when it's time yeah. to pick up. <laughs> no, right. That's always something else. Yeah. You yeah. guys are very organized over there, I will say. It's very We organized. try to be. We try to make it as convenient as possible for everybody. Yeah. And you have a little garden in the back as well? Yeah, we have a side garden. And um, mm -hmm. uh, my other half um, has a garden at her spot. So all of our... Um, our food waste goes to compostable to go goes to compost yes so, i see yeah. that's great i like the i like that a lot yeah so every know? year we um we give out sprouts to the um, people i think we had um cantaloupe sprouts last year mm -hmm. so all the um, yeah. food waste and all the um boxings and, and whatever it can be um it gets broken down um mm -hmm. there's a uh, natural worms in there and then uh we, we grow cantaloupe and bell peppers and i think nice, um, the first nice. year we gave away cantaloupe sprouts and the second year we gave uh, bell pepper sprouts away. Yeah, you'll have to incorporate those, uh, the cantaloupe maybe into your meal. Into the dish. <laughs> you have like fruit afterward, you know, it starts <laughs> with, I don't know, whatever, and have the fruit at the end, it'll be like, yeah. just, you know, um, yeah, yeah. nothing better than organic cantaloupe, you know. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, and you could do like a tofu scramble with the bell peppers. I don't know, the sky's the limit, right? So, yeah, yeah. so but I, I really love your idea. I'm so so glad you got started and you're really serving the community because I think a lot of people do think when they become vegan they can't get this local kind of food so I think that's awesome you know no, definitely yeah it definitely started out of a necessity yeah no that's that's uh, I mean that's wonderful it's a beautiful story um so we're out of time um so we have to wrap it up but I'm yeah. Dr. Grace O'Neill this is Healthy Planet on the Think Tech live streaming network series we've been talking with Hansen of Level V808. Thanks to Eric, our broadcast engineer, and the rest of the crew at ThinkTech for hosting our show. And thanks to you, our listeners, for listening. I'll see you on September 30th for more of Healthy Planet on ThinkTech, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet. My special guest will be Dr. Salish Rao. We will be talking about climate change. If you have ideas for the show or questions for my future guests, please contact me at healthyplanetthinktech at gmail.com. Check out my website at graceinhawaii.com or Instagram at gracefulliving365 for more information on my projects, including future show guests. I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. Aloha, everyone. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.